Namaste, yogis. Welcome. Thank you so much for watching. And so today we're going to um, have another beginner's practice where we're going to work on our alignments of the asana, basic alignments. So to start, let us just relax on our backs on Shavasana. You can have a blanket under your head if you want. If you find that your hips or your lower back are tender, you can also have a pillow or a bolster under your knees. Throw your shoulder blades together. Relax your upper back and shoulders on the ground. If you find that your neck holds a lot of tension and sometimes it feels like your head is falling back, you can hold onto the back of the neck and then slide your hands on the back of the head. That will position your uh, head in a way that elongates your neck but without hyperextending. And then scan your body and make sure that there is no pain, any pinching sensation. Sometimes the buttocks are still active while in Shavasana, so it helps many times to go ahead and give it a squeeze, a, like a big squeeze, and then let them go. And that usually uh, helps us to bring awareness to the muscles that are not uh, yet relaxed. The same thing goes for the legs. You can extend your legs a little more and give them a squeeze and then release them. And bring the awareness down to your feet. Relax your toes and your food soles. And think about the top of your feet, relax the area of your ankles, your shins, relax your calves, soften your knees, relax your thighs, your buttocks, relax your hips, relax your shoulders, notice the curvature of the spine and relax it. Relax your rib cage, especially every time you breathe in. Think about your rib cage sinking so that your belly can freely expand. At the top of the inhalation, begin expanding into the chest. And then exhale from the chest. And finally, your belly. Let your shoulders be heavy. Relax your arms and your hands. And allow your fingers to curl naturally, no tension, no effort, just relaxation. Relax your face, your jaw. Keep your eyelids softly closed. And then begin following the breath once more. So we allow the breath to go into the belly, letting the rib cage sink as you fill up your tummy. Once there is no more space, your belly is expanded, you can start sending the breath into the chest. When you exhale, let your chest fall. And finally, your navel moves down towards the spine once your chest is empty, allowing all the air out. <laughs> you may bring your right hand to your belly and your left hand to your chest and breathe in into your belly. Into your chest. Exhale from the chest. And finally from the belly. Again, breathe in into the belly. When there is no more space, fill up your chest. all the way to the top and exhale from the chest to the belly. Let us take three more breaths like this, Dirga Pranayama.
you're done with your three rounds, you can release your hands on the floor. Take a few moments here, observe your breath. Don't control it, just observe it for a few moments. Send your breath and awareness down to your feet. Wiggle your toes. Move your feet side to side. Wiggle your fingers. Stretch your arms overhead. Bring your legs closer together and squeeze every muscle from toes to fist. Broom face, tight, tight, tight. Stretch, tense. Exhale, release. Let's do it again. Point or flex your feet and squeeze every muscle. Tight, tight, tight. Hold, stretch, tense. And release. We'll do it one more time. Stretch and tense and squeeze every muscle, your legs, your glutes, tight, tight, tight. And let all tension go. Bend your knees, bring your foot sills on the floor. You can keep your arms overhead, relax them or bring them at a T position. And allow your knees to swing side to side. Keep your eyes maybe closed and really focus on the sensations. You don't have to go too deep into the stretch. Just let your knees go as far as it feels all right. And your hips and your knees. And when you are ready, come back to center and walk your feet a little wider apart. Maybe mat with apart. You don't have to go that wide. And continue moving the knees side to side. Breathe throughout the movement. You can go faster with the move, movement if your body needs that. But try to keep your breath uh, gentle and slow and deep. Awesome. When you are ready, come back to center. Bring your feet together and move your knees towards the chest. Hug them and rock side to side. Massage your back. Relax your jaw. Relax your face. And when you are ready, come back to center. Keep your legs on the, floor, um, on the air. Bring your arms at a T position and have your knees at a 90 degree angle. Press your back onto the floor and the next time you exhale, allow your knees to fall towards the left. As you inhale, bring yourself back to center. Keep the opposite shoulder on the floor. Other side as you exhale. Inhale, center. And exhale, find your rhythm. Do not worry about whether your knees touch the floor or not. You can go just a little bit to the side, back to center, and you start getting uh, that um, engagement of your obliques. You also want to engage your inner thighs. So when you go to the side, don't let your knees go apart. Keep them together, even if you don't feel like you are able to go too far, that's okay. Meanwhile, keep working with your shoulder blade so that your opposite shoulder does not leave the floor. Make sure that your neck is relaxed. You can keep your arms relaxed unless you really need a grip. Then press your arms, especially the upper part of your arms, onto the floor so that you don't hyperextend your elbows. You maybe are going towards the bottom of your mat like I am. So if you have a blanket, maybe you have to bring it along with you. We used to ask my teacher, why do we end up at the bottom of the mat? Because you're doing it right. So <laughs> in case you were wondering, no, if you're not going to the front, you're doing it right too. It's okay. Okay, so we'll do one more on each side. We started to the left. And so when you go on the last one to the right, come back to center and bring your feet back onto the floor. And you can walk your way all the way to the top of the mat with as much grace as I am doing this. <laughs> and then relax your legs, close your eyes and breathe. Really observe, check in with your body, relax your legs, your glutes, relax your hips, let them sink onto the floor, let your shoulders be heavy. Just like if you were about to get your uh, alignment for Shavasana again. And then turn to your breath. Really observe what your breath is saying. After this movement, especially when we work with side bends and twists, we open up the channels of prana, the nadis. And so when we return to center, we might find that the uh, flow travels a little easier 
through our bodies, the flow of prana, the breath. We'll take one more breath here. And when you're ready, you're gonna bend your knees and bring your foot soles on the floor and have your toes and your knees about fist distance apart. Now, when you're ready, you're gonna tilt your pelvis going into a gentle arch. We've been working with the movement of the pelvis and try to keep your rib cage grounded. Remember that on the inhalation, we work on expanding into the belly and we let the rib cage sink. At the top of the inhalation, we start sending the breath into the chest. Now, when you exhale, release the breath from the chest. Navel presses down towards the spine, pressing your back towards the floor, allowing your pelvis to uh, change position and go on to a posterior tilt. So your tailbone scoops up and your pubic bone rises. The, uh, the glutes uh, stay on the floor, like the sacrum presses down onto the floor as well. The glutes might not be touching the floor, but you're not lifting your hips. I guess that's what I'm, I'm trying to say. All right, so when you inhale, tailbone down, fill up your belly. Let your rib cage sink first. At the top of the inhalation, fill up into your chest, into the side ribs. Exhale from the chest. Navel presses down, taking the spine to the floor, pressing the sacrum on the ground. Again, fill up your belly, inhale. Tailbone drops. Rib cage also drops with the tailbone. All the way to the chest, feel up. Exhale, chest drops. And finally, navel pushes down the spine. Think about the navel pressing the spine towards the floor. Inhale, belly rises. When your belly is filling up, think about your belly lifting you so that you can create that space on your lower back. Meanwhile, your tailbone drops and your rib cage drops as well. If you like working with imagination, you can visualize uh, your belly moving your spine in the same direction as the belly goes, the spine goes. So when you exhale, empty your chest first, draw the navel down, taking the spine down. We'll do three more. Inhale, belly rises. Take the spine with it. Drop the tailbone and the rib cage. Then fill up to the chest. Exhale, let your chest drop. And when you're ready, navel drops, taking the spine with it. Inhale. Tailbone and rib cage drops. Drop. Find your rhythm. Do one more. Extend your legs. When you're done with your last breath, observe. And notice any sensation on your lower back. Usually when you go into your first Shavasana, uh, there is a lot of tenderness on the back, on the hips. After doing some movement uh, on the pelvis, the muscles that we need to stabilize the pelvis awaken. And so that once we go back to Shavasana, very often the pain is no longer there. So pay attention if that's the case. Now when you're ready, bend your knees, bring your foot soles onto the floor and go on to your favorite side. Lay on a fetal position for a few moments. And check again, notice your body, notice your muscles and joints, your breath. Use your top hand to slowly help yourself up onto your seated position. Now from your seated position, you may use your blanket Mm, I said seated, sorry, I, I meant on your knees. And so from your knees, you want your blanket 
under your knees and allow your body, go with your knees apart, sit back, wiggle your body, send your tailbone towards uh, the sky, trying to get that pelvic tilt. So we're not moving from the waist, remember we are taking the pelvis with us. And then rest your elbows onto the floor, keep the connection of your heels and uh, down on uh, your heels and your glutes. Press your arms down like if you were in a sphinx pose and draw your shoulders into its sockets and keep your gaze somewhere down on the floor. And breathe here. Your pose is active. If this is too much for your knees, walk your body forward and or you can have props under uh, under your legs, under your glutes. And you wanna find a position where it feels right for you to still send your tailbone up, whether you are sitting on the heels or slightly forward. Meanwhile, your arms are in instincts arms, which means that you have about, um, your, shoulder, your elbows are shoulder width apart, so you can hug them. And then your hands are at the same distance as your elbows. Press your hands down and push your shoulders into its sockets. Keep your gaze somewhere on the floor for now. Keep pressing your arms down, your hands down, and keep your shoulders in. Bring your gaze maybe to the top of the mat if the neck allows. And if you feel like it's too much for the back of the neck, then keep your gaze down. Elongating the spine is a good idea here. Press your feet, your shins onto the floor. Notice how that activates your mula banda. You know, lift the pelvic floor muscles as you press your feet down. Pay attention to what your belly is doing so you're still getting the breath into the belly. And at the very top, when there is no more um, space for your pranic flow to go, start feeling into your chest and your upper back. Rising. Exhale, let your shoulders drop. And finally, draw the navel towards the spine. Keep the connections with the ground active. Keep pressing your, um, your pose down. Watch for that neck. We'll take three more breaths here. Filling up into the belly. Into the side ribs and chest. Upper back. Exhale from the upper body. Down to the navel. Two more breaths. At the bottom of the exhalation, press your feet and lift the pelvic floor. Feet pressed to the floor. Inhale, soften your muscles, fill up your tummy. Side drops and chest. Think about your back body expanding as well. Exhale, let all the air go. Last breath. Inhale, rising. And falling from top to bottom. At the bottom of the exhalation, press your feet onto the floor and lift the pelvic floor muscles. And release as you take your next inhalation. Stack your hands or your fist, rest your forehead down. Breathe. Continue to work into sending your tailbone towards the sky. Like if you were trying to create um, an anterior toe, like an arch on your back that is pressing your belly towards the floor, but it's not gonna look that way. You're just shifting your pelvis in that direction, feeling the release through your back muscles, lower back, We'll take one more breath here, full deep breath. The next time you inhale, slowly push yourself up, bring your hands under the shoulders and walk yourself to the top of the mat for tabletop position. About fist distance between your knees, press the top of the feet on the floor. Now, send your tailbone slightly up. 
push the mat away from you. You want to make sure that your, uh, the creases of your wrist are parallel to the short end of the mat. Your thumbs are pointing one another, and your pinkies, although are extending out to the sides, you're not letting them go too far out because that can hurt. When you're ready, eyes of the elbows face forward. So when you bend the elbows, they should bend towards you and not out to the sides. Now from here, with your tailbone rising, press the top of the feet on the floor and start pushing the mat away, drawing your shoulder blades away from each other, hollow up your chest and your armpits, and keep your gaze between the hands. Now you're pressing the floor with both hands and feet, top of the feet, your shins, you are sending your tailbone up, but you are allowing your upper back to round and your shoulder blades to move away. You can work from here and breathe. And when you are ready, you can release your posture. You can go on your elbows and rotate your wrists. And then we go back again. Those of you who would like to take this into a downward dog and it feels okay, there's no high blood pressure or heart condition, we're going to do that. So you're going to send your tailbone up, active tabletop, push the mat away, eyes of the elbows face forward. Now draw your navel in and pull it up inside your, like if you were trying to tuck it inside your rib cage. Curl the toes under, and on your next exhalation, pick up the knees, send your hips up, and push your chest towards the thighs. Push your hands down and forward. We're not staying here for too long. So you want to push. Uh, you can bring your hands a little wider apart, by the way. Make sure your toes are not gripping, and you are bending your knees enough so that your tailbone is rising. Keep sending your um, navel in and up and breathe. Like if you had a vacuum that is um, going from the crown of the head and is lifting your pelvic floor muscles, is moving your navel in and up. Keep breathing. We'll take one more breath here, full deep breath. And on your next inhalation, go up and the balls on the balls of the feet and exhale, transfer the weight to the front, uncurl the toes, knees down. Go on your elbows, whether you were on active table on, or downward dog, and then rotate your wrist. Awesome. And when you are ready, come up onto your um, hands and knees, your tabletop position. Inhale here, tailbone rises, drop your belly, shoulder blades together, look forward or up. Exhale, tuck your tailbone, round your back, then let your head dangle. Start with the tailbone rising, drop your belly, open your chest, look forward or up. Exhale, begin with the tailbone, then round your back and let your head relax. We'll do three more. When you are done with your third round, come back to center, walk your hands towards your knees, and then walk yourself up onto your tall kneeling position. Hands on, um, on your waist or on your hips, squeeze your buttocks and bring your right foot forward. Now from here, before we go any further, you want to draw your navel in once again. And we're gonna allow for the lower back arch to exist. So we're not going to flatten or collapse onto the lower back. You can walk the front foot a little further forward. So just like we have been doing, so that you can allow Dirga Pranayama to exist, you need to work on the drop of your rib cage. But you cannot drop so much that it makes you collapse, so then there is no, will be no space for prana. So just a gentle drop of the ribcage and start bringing all that air into the belly. Then start breathing into your chest. And exhale, release your chest. And then the navel goes in and your ribcage might pop forward, but not because it's, um, you're changing position, it's just it's showing up because your belly is tucking in. 
Now, if having your heel under the knee uh, straight in front of your hip is too much, yeah, right in front of your hip, you can walk your foot a little further out to the side. Don't walk it too far because then you can pinch on your hip. Just enough so that you can keep your balance here. We're not staying here for too long. We just want to bring the awareness to the hips. You can bring your hand on your back, your lower back. Make sure that um, it is parallel to the short end of the mat. Hands can be on your leg if you like. Relax the front foot. You can uh, lift the toes or you can release them on the floor, but don't let them grip. Make sure your bottom knee is padded and it feels all right. And continue to breathe into your belly. And then once it's full, into your chest. And then empty from the chest to the belly. We'll take one more breath, full deep breath. And on your next inhalation, hinge forward, hands by your foot, curl the back toes under, pick up the knee, and plant your foot on the floor. So watch for that front, uh, for that blanket. Your front knee is right over the heel. So we were working on this last time, so you want to really bring awareness to your hip here. See if you can lift your body a little bit and try to keep your toes relaxed. Try to keep your glutes relaxed here and activate your legs more. How does that work for you? Think about lifting a little higher. Your knee doesn't have to be right over the heel. You can bring it back a little bit, that's fine. Remember to relax your toes. We'll take one more breath, full deep breath. And with control on your next breath, bring your hands on your thigh and help yourself up. So from here, because our toes are facing slightly more towards the left, our hips are more slightly going to be facing towards the left. And that is okay. So what we want is to bring the hips towards the front of the mat. So we're going to move the back foot a little bit. So pivot the toes so they can face more towards the front. That will give space for your knee to um, rotate along with the leg, with the upper leg, and not torque it. Keep the front knee bent. So just like we did on the floor, you want to find an arch on your lower back. Not like a collapsing back arch, but just something that it feels natural to you, so you're not flattening. Then allow your ribcage to drop just gently so that you can still work with your belly breath. Back leg is extended, front knee is bent. You can shorten your stunt if you want. You don't have to go too wide, keeping that back heel onto the floor. Keep your hips facing forward, and if that for some reason is torquing the back knee, pivot your foot a little more so that your toes are facing more towards the front. That will keep your knee and your toes pointing on the same direction, and um, the hip opener on the left side can be a little, can lessen, that's fine. So find the pose that works for you, breathe. If your balance is challenged here, remember that you can walk that right foot slightly out to the right. Relax your hands by your sides and breathe deeply. You wanna try to keep your shoulders over your hips and then see if you can relax your feet and see if you can put your legs to work instead. And how about your glutes? Can you let go of the glutes here? And how does that affect your balance if you do so? Bring your hands together at the center of the heart in namaste position. Vira Badrasana or warrior one. So it doesn't have to be too big, too impressive for your muscles to actually kick in and start working. Try to keep relaxing your feet if that works and keep engaging your legs. If it works for your, um, for your arms, maybe bring your hands overhead, maybe shoulder width apart and release your shoulders into its sockets. Keep relaxing your feet.
if your rib cage went forward, remember, just tuck it a little bit so that you can continue to breathe into your tummy. The next time you inhale, slowly and with control, bring your hands together and exhale, hands to the center of the heart. Inhale, extend your front leg. And as you exhale, we're going to turn the hips towards the, uh, the long end of the mat. So pivot your back foot so your back toes will be facing towards the long end of the mat or towards your left. And your right toes still point towards the short end of the mat. Remember that your standing is not too wide, so really watch it here. Relax your feet. We always work with very active feet. feet. That's not a bad thing, but now we need to let them go so that we can address our pelvis and we can address your uh, lower back. So with your toes relaxed on the floor, allow your pelvis to be neutral. So pubic bone, hip bones might be at the same level, but still check that you have your lower back arch. When you are ready, notice if your kneecap and your toes are pointing, pointing on the same direction. If they're not, you're gonna turn your toes to the position where your kneecap, the center of your front kneecap is pointing at. All right, the same goes for the back leg. If your knee is pointing in, turn your back toes in. If your knee is pointing straight forward, keep your toes facing forward. See, there's not just one alignment for all. We all check what our body's doing. Squeeze your bum for a moment. Notice how that changes the position of your pelvis and let go of your bum. A T position of the arms as you inhale. Relax your feet. Exhale, rotate your torso towards the short end of the mat. Feel the demand that you have put on your left leg. Try to draw your shoulder blades together and keep your arms T position even if you're not completely to the short end of the mat. Breathe. Don't torque your spine. So although you are um, not bending your legs, you are still engaging them. Keep your feet relaxing. Keep relaxing your glutes. Imagine if you had a ball in between your legs and you're squeezing that ball with your legs. Squeeze them together. There we go. And then let go of your glute. Keep dropping your ribcage and keep breathing into your belly. Dirga pranayama still. Make sure that both shoulder blades are engaged. So the mind will try to do what mine did. So it's trying to get me right across. And I can feel it slightly on my knee already. So make sure that when you go onto your rotation, it's not taking the pelvis with it. Otherwise, your knee is going to pay for it. We'll take one more breath here, full deep breath. And on your next inhalation, come back to center. And as you exhale, release your hands, rotate your shoulders back and down. Awesome. We're going to do the other side. So when you're ready, turn your toes towards the right, bend the front knee, pivot the back foot, and release your knee onto the floor, and come down. Take a few moments here. Balance your pelvis, and when you're ready, hands on your waist or on your hips, and step forward with the other foot, so left foot. And so once you have your foot in front, once again, you're going to measure where you're going to place it. You want the knee over the heel. You can go a little further if you did the stretch on your, uh, on your standing uh, hip. You can do it again. Or you can stay on a shorter stand, and that's fine. Same thing, if you are challenged in your balance, you can walk your foot out to the side a bit. Don't, over, don't overextend your... Uh, your feet, up, your knees apart, because then your hip is not going to like it. We're going to find that lower back arch, and then notice if the ribcage is doing us, um, that arch again, and so bring the ribcage in. Relax your hands and your thighs. Relax your feet. And begin to work with your dirga pranayama. Letting your belly fill up first. We allow the rib cage to release down, but don't let it collapse.
Remember, we're not staying here for too long, but just enough so that you can start feeling that wobbly sensation and continue to focus on your breath. Keep relaxing the front foot. Don't let your, knees col your knee collapse. Keep your knee pointing straight forward. We're going to take one more breath here, full deep breath. And when you are ready, Gently bring your hands to the front foot. Curl the back toes under, pick up the knee, and release your foot on the floor. So front knee once again is bent. And once we can get into this position, you want to make sure the knee is either over the ankle, never passing, or slightly behind. Check with your hip, relax your feet, and lift your body a little bit. So trying to send your tailbone up. Fingertips are by your sides, maybe touching, maybe off the floor, and we continue to relax those feet. Sip through the navel and pull it up. Engage your legs. With control, mindfully, you're going to lift up. And once more, we're going to allow the hips to face the short end of the mat. Watch for the blanket. And once you shift your pelvis towards the front, notice the back knee if you need to pivot the back foot. Shorten the stance if you need to as well. Bring that front foot for, uh, back a little bit. So when I say pivot the foot, remember your toes can point forward a little more so that will allow your hip to easily stay facing to the front. Okay. Once you are ready, you're going to go ahead and find your lower back arch, and you're going to release your rib cage in. Breathe. Relax your feet. Relax your hands by your side. Relax your shoulders. So this Virabhadrasana, or warrior, is a little or a lot different than what we normally do. Here, we are relaxing through our feet, to mainly engage those legs. If you find it hard, if your glutes are doing all the work, try to push your legs towards each other. Like if you had a beach ball in between your legs and you're trying to bring your legs together. And that will start getting you into your abductors and abductors, your quads will fire up and then work on getting those feet relaxed. If it works for you, uh, you can bring your hands in Angelic Mudra or Namaste. And if it works for you, on your next inhalation, bring your hands overhead and relax your shoulders. So once again, don't use the arm position as an opportunity to shift your back. Although you still work with your lower back arch, you're still keeping the upper back mostly straight. Find your breath, keep relaxing your glutes, keep relaxing your feet, and keep maybe moving your legs towards each other, like, like if you visualize that, um, that ball. Breathing into your belly, filling up into the chest, and exhale from the chest, and then to the belly. Awesome, I'll take one more breath here, full deep breath. And inhale, hands together. Exhale down to the center of the heart. Inhale your hands on your hips or your waist, and exhale, extend your front leg. Now we're gonna turn again towards the long end of the mat, balance your hips, and once more, you want to adjust your knees and toes. So if your back knee is pointing straight uh, forward, then your toes point there. If it's pointing more inwardly, you turn your toes inwardly. The whole leg goes with the toes. Front knee, same thing. If the center of the kneecap is pointing straight to the center of the mat, that's where you stay. If you notice it is collapsing, then turn your toes slightly in and let it match. 
So balance your hips here, relax your shoulders, back and down. Bring your arms out to the sides at a T position, shoulders away from the ears. Breathe in deeply here. And on your next exhalation, start bringing your torso towards the front of the mat. And once again, you want to take your arms only or your torso only as far as your um, knee allows you. Your, let your knee be like your, um, your alert mode. So if you go so far that you start shifting the whole hips, you're going to feel that. Breathe deeply here. Do not force your uh, posture to look a certain way. And here the tendency is that the back arm doesn't fully engage because we want to bring, see yourself forward. So try to push that arm back so that your, both of your shoulder blades are equally engaging. Try to relax your feet and your glutes and keep working with your legs, pushing them down and towards each other. You can push them, your feet down and away from each other. And you can work on that by trying to keep your toes and your feet mainly relaxed. Return to your dirga pranayama. Feet relaxed, breath is flowing. Legs are doing the work more than the glutes. Try to relax your buttocks. And the next time you inhale, come back to center. And as you exhale, release your arms down. We're going to return to the front. So pivot your front foot, back foot, and with control, release your knee down onto the ground. Sit back for a few moments, shoulders back and down. Prepare for your downward dog. If you're not doing downward dog, I will go for you a second, um, a second option. And if you were doing downward dog and you want to try the second option, you're welcome to do that too. So we're going to go to tabletop and then rest the elbows onto the floor like we did on the first child's pose. So sphinx arms, you want your elbows right below the shoulders. Press your palms on the floor. All right, so you still send your tailbone up towards the sky, relax your head. And when you're ready, curl the toes under, shoulders into its sockets, pick up the hips, and walk your feet slightly towards you. Draw your navel in, relax your head so you can move your head yes and no, making sure that you are not, um, that you're not putting any weight on the head. Send your navel in and up. You work onto the position of your pelvis and you can bend your knees to create that space for your pelvis to tilt. So if you are comfortable on your uh, dolphin pose, you're gonna stay here. If you want to go up onto downward facing dog, you're gonna go up here. Check which one works for you. If there's high blood pressure, remember we stay on, a, uh, on an active. Um, tabletop, press the feet down. The All right, so from whichever version you've gone, on your next inhalation, mindfully, bring your knees down, uncurl the toes. If you were on tabletop, walk yourself back, sit back on your heels, bring your knees apart. And when you're ready, wiggle your body, rest your elbows again, and then sphinx arms, push the arms down. Gaze can be between the hands if the neck allows and continue to work on the connection of the glutes to the heels. Breathe. Notice if there is any sensation this time around as you go into this position. If you are more able to maybe bring the hips down, uh, your glutes down, sorry, and tailbone up. You're actively pushing your hands, your forearms, and your feet down onto the floor. And at the bottom of the exhalation, when there is no more air, you may lift the pelvic floor muscles.
never on the inhalation, only on the exhalation, and it's just a gentle lift. Not a squeeze, just a gentle lift. Like an elevator. We'll do one more, one more breath. And with control, we're gonna push yourself up onto your tabletop position. Delbon up, curl the toes under. You can stay in active table or go up onto a downward facing dog once again. Push your chest to the thighs. Push your tailbone bone up. If you were on active tabletop, you're gonna walk your hands towards your knees and come up on a tall kneeling position. If you are on a downward facing dog, you're gonna walk your hands towards your feet. Once you are on your tall kneeling position, those of you who were in tabletop, you're gonna meet us on our uh, for forward fold. You can take your blanket out of the way and have about a fist distance between your big toes and your heels. Bend your knees and bring your hands on your thighs. And then we're gonna go halfway only, or maybe a little higher, and find that um, lower back arch. So we're not talking the tailbone here. You want to make sure that you're not hinging either. So try to find neutrality. Hands on your thighs for support. Keep your knees bent slightly or a lot, depending what works for you. Keep this time your buttocks active. Don't let your knees collapse so you can uh, measure and have two fists or one fist distance between the knees. It will feel different for everybody, so measure yourself and see what works for you. Draw your shoulder blades into um, towards the center of your back. Keep your gaze somewhere on the mat. And on your next inhalation, walk your hands up the legs. And exhale, shoulders back and down. Bring your hands on your waist or on your hips and bend your right knee and open out to the right. So from here, you can bring your foot sole against the ankle and keep the toes on the floor for balance. Do make sure that you don't let your hip collapse to the side. So once you have your position, remember to stabilize your pelvis. You want your hip bones and pubic bone parallel to the wall or perpendicular to the floor. Find your lower back arch and bring your leg a little higher if your balance allows you for that. Bring your hands on your rib cage. And don't let it sh uh, flare. Now squeeze your bum and lift from the hips. Lift your ribcage from the hips, not forward, but up. Relax your shoulders. Bring your hands out to the sides at a T position, palms facing up. Breathe deeply here. On your next inhalation, bring your hands towards the sky. You can keep them shoulder width apart or you can bring your palms to touch. No sending ribcage forward. Try to relax your toes. They can touch the floor, but don't let them grip. Next time you inhale, bring your hands to the center of the heart. And as you exhale, bring your foot forward, your knee forward, extend your right foot forward, and then release down, walk it out. We'll do our um, Berksasana on the other side, or three pose. So once again, from Tadasana, balance your pelvis, hands on your waist or your hips, bend your left knee, and open out to the left. And once more, you may bring your foot sole against the ankle. Open your knee so that um, you feel that demand on your hip flexor here. You can bring your foot a little higher. You don't have to. Avoid the knee level. And don't collapse onto your hip. Breathe. When you are ready, bring your hands to your rib cage. 
Notice your breath. Keep that left leg active, and when you're ready, squeeze your bum and lift from the rib cage. Bring it away from the hips, and then relax your shoulders. When you are ready, bring your arms out to the sides at a T position, palms facing up. The next time you exhale, bring your hands up. You can keep them shoulder width apart or you can bring them together. Continue to move the rib cage away from the hips but not forward. If you fall off the pose, you just come back on it. That's okay. It's no big deal, really, you guys. I'm not just saying that because I'm falling. <laughs> Maybe I am. No, no, I'm not. Seriously, it's no big deal. And pay attention what is your good side. So usually your not so stable side is your more flexible side. When you are ready on your next inhalation, bring your hands together in namaste position. And as you exhale, bring your knee forward, extend your foot forward and release down. And shake the tension off your feet. Awesome job, we're going down onto our bellies. So from the back of the mat, shoulders back and down. If you have knee problems, find your way onto your kneeling position. Otherwise, bring your hands forward, relax your shoulders, and let your heels leave the floor. Now from here, very mindfully and without letting the knees flare, start bringing your weight towards your uh, hips, shoulders towards your hips, and start bringing yourself down to your heels. Your arms are still in front of you. Maybe bring your hands together in namaste position. With control, bring your hands down and knees down and then walk towards the top of the mat. Awesome. Now when you're ready, bring your big toes to touch and go onto your uh, crocodile position or makarasana. We'll take one more breath here, full deep breath. And when you're ready and with control, bring your feet parallel, toes point back. Move your hands right by your rib cage. Elbow squeeze in towards the body. Bring your forehead down to the floor. Adjust if you need to. Watch for your elbows. Watch for your shoulders. Press the top of the feet on the floor and lift the knees. And as you inhale, bring your forehead, nose, chin, and chest off the floor. Little to no weight on the hands. Exhale, chest, chin, nose, forehead down. Again. No. Forehead, nose, chin, and chest up. And exhale, chest, chin, nose, forehead down. Continue at your own pace. And every time you rise, you make sure that there is not so much weight on your hands. If you rely on your hands, you potentially uh, can hurt your back. So make sure that it's your back alone with a little bit of support of the hands doing the work. We want to put the mat on the back muscles. We want to strengthen these muscles. This type of back bends stimulate the adrenal glands. It is really good to stimulate your organs. On every rising, you feel your belly pressing against the floor. Last one and stay up and breathe. One more breath. And exhale, chest, chin, nose, forehead down. 
bring your hands under the forehead, big toes touching, heels out. On your next inhalation, bring your feet parallel and bring your hands by your hips, palms facing down, forehead on the floor. Inhale, lift your head and chest off the floor. And although your hands are touching the floor, you're not putting the weight on the hands, just like in Cobra. Now pull your toes away from you, like if you were trying to touch whatever it is behind you with your toes. And then bring your toes up. Once again, no weight is on the hands, although they're still touching the floor. Maybe go into cupcake hands and see if you can lift a little higher. You don't have to. You can stay down. It's good. Keep pulling your toes away. The crown of the head is pulling forward, so your gaze goes on this one. Maybe bring your hands off the floor and breathe. Think about extension, not height on this one. Breathe. Now you can stay here, or if you choose, maybe keeping your knees off the floor, bend your knees and bring your hands towards your heels. We're not touching the heels. We're not going into full Danurasana or bow pose. Try to lift the thighs off the floor. Even if they don't lift, just try and notice how your uh, muscles, your lower muscles of the abdomen work hard to do this. Keep your shoulder blades together. Keep your feet flexed. And the next time you inhale, release your feet onto the floor. Exhale, circle your arms to the front, hands under the forehead, stack them the other way. Big toes touch heels out. Gaze to the right. Maybe left hand by your hip, palm up. And maybe right hand out to the right. If it works for your neck, you can rest the temple on the mat. And your right arm can be around your face. Take one more breath, full deep breath. Hands under the forehead, extend your leg. Gaze to the other side, check with your neck first, and if that feels all right, then we're gonna bring maybe the right hand by the hip, palm facing up, and the left knee out to the left. And once more, maybe rest your temple on the floor if it's okay for the neck, breathe. The next time you inhale, bring your hands under the forehead. And exhale, extend your leg. Toes touch, heels out. We'll take one more breath here, full deep breath. And when you're ready, bring your hands under the sh uh, shoulder to rib cage by your rib cage, feet parallel, and push yourself up on your knees. You can go onto active uh, active tabletop. You can go onto cat cows, or if you your body wants, you can go once again onto your downward facing dog. So only if downward dog feels right. Any pose really, um, cat cow will also do. Will give you a nice movement on your back. And stretching here. We'll take one more breath, full deep breath. And with control, bring your knees down. Gather your props. We're going to sit down on our uh, Sukhasana or easy pose. 
So if you have your extra props and you would like to use them for under your knees, you're welcome to do that. Remember that you want a little bit of um, support under the tailbone. And sometimes having blankets under the knees can also help. Cross one leg in front of the other and allow your body to find that perfect spot where your shoulders can rest over the hips. Slightly tuck your chin and press the crown of the head towards the ceiling. Breathe. We'll take one more breath, full deep breath. And when you are ready, extend your right leg out to the right. If you have a blanket, you can always place that blanket under the knee for extra support. Flex your foot, press your, in, um, your left foot against your inner thigh, balance your weight, and then on to, as you exhale, rotate your torso slightly to the left. Bring your right hand to your thigh and bring your left uh, hand onto your lower back, palm faces away. The next time you exhale, hinge towards your right. So instead of going to the deepest of your extension, you're going to find a place where you feel that you can press your, um, your seat bones onto the floor. You can press that um, right heel away from you. And think about being pulled from the crown of the head away from the hip. So you still create that elongation of the body, that extension, that finding that space. Rotate slightly your torso towards the sky and then find that side bend. You put equal weight on left and right. So really working on getting more weight onto the left hip. So uh, your hand can help you for extra support. You can come a little higher. If you can hold yourself with your core, the hand is only there to help you with that rotation and to keep your shoulder in place. The next time you inhale with control, come up to an upright and exhale, rotate your torso forward, relax your shoulders back and down. We're gonna switch legs. So when you are ready, have that left leg out to the left and press the right foot sole against the left inner thigh. Balance the weight evenly on your hips. And when you're ready with control, rotate towards the right. Just slightly, remember we're not going too far into it. Press your left heel away from you and bring your left hand to your right thigh and your right hand to your lower back, palm faces away. Lengthen through the spine as you breathe in. And as you breathe out, remember that we're being pulled up and then towards the extended leg without collapsing. And you can let go a little bit of the leg if your body allows you to go a little deeper, but always containing ourselves and not just letting ourselves go. Especially if you are quite flexible, that will be the tendency. Try to, try to resist the urge to go full out into your poses. Contain the prana into the lower chakras, pressing yourself towards the floor, engaging the lower muscles. Remember the chakras are the vortex of energy that are along the spine and the grounding chakra is the muladhara and is right at the base of the spine. We'll take one more breath here, full deep breath. And as you inhale with control, come back to an upright. Exhale, rotate your torso forward, extend your legs and shake the tension off. Final asana here before we go on to our pranayama. Flex your feet and press your heels away from you. You can have a blanket under the knees, remember, for this dandasana. As you activate your feet, Try to send your tailbone back and create that neutral pelvis. We've been working on it for the past week. 
Roll your shoulders back and under, tuck your chin slightly and press the crown of the head towards the ceiling. Slowly breathe here. Remember that your rib cage doesn't pop forward to allow your tummy to expand. Notice if both of your legs are equally touching the floor or you feel leaning more towards the one side. To open up your shoulders, bring your hands behind you, fingertips away from you, draw your blades together. No weight is on the hands. Press the crown of the head. Remember that cord that is pulling you up. Think about that cord coming also from your heels, pushing you away from the heels. Fingertips down towards the floor without putting weight. Contain your ribcage so you can breathe fully into your belly. We'll take one more breath here, full deep breath. The next time you exhale, from the hips, hinge forward slightly and breathe. So just enough that you don't have to round your back. Keep your feet and hands active. Crown of the head pulls forward slightly. Tuck your chin onto your chest. Breathe. Coming out of this Paschimottasana, very mindfully bring your hands right under the shoulders, fingertips pointing forward, and help yourself back up. Release your legs, shake the tension up. For our pranayama, we're going to practice on the floor and from um, Suptava Konasana. So you are welcome to have blankets under your knees if you like, or a bolster or a pillow. Go on to your butterfly. Once you get there, have your foot soles on the floor and let your knees flare out. Bring your foot soles to touch. Balance your pelvis, pubic bone, hip bones are um, parallel to the floor. And then let your rib cage release. Bring your hands towards the sky and draw your shoulders down and into its sockets. Relax your arms. So we're going to combine this meditation, Japanese meditation, with our Dirga Pranayama. And remember that we start filling up into the belly, letting the rib cage release towards the floor. And exhale, navel presses down towards the spine. Maybe navel tucks in towards the rib cage, allowing your rib cage to be more visible, not because you're lifting it, just because your belly is moving down. Continue. Belly breaths. You want to stack your joints so your wrist and elbows are right under, over the shoulders. Keep your hands, arms relaxed. Keep your neck soft. Keep your legs and glutes relaxed.
Don't let your mind wander. On your next exhalation, mindfully bring your knees up and inhale, extend your legs on the mat or over your bolster. Ever so slowly on your next breath, release your hands onto the floor. And then use the body sensations as your main focus, observe. You can stay in Shavasana for as long as you need. You can pause the video and relax. Maybe resume later to as close our practice together. Otherwise, on your next breath, send the awareness down to your feet, wiggle your toes. Move your feet side to side. Wiggle your fingers. And stretch your arms overhead, bring your legs closer together and squeeze every muscle from toes to fist, tight, 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 prune face and release we'll do it again point or flex your feet and squeeze every muscle tight 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 and stretch and release last one make it count flex or point your feet and squeeze tight 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 let all tension go go on to your favorite side take a few moments here Use your top hand to slowly help yourself up on your next exhalation. And from here you can have your blanket if you want to sit on your sukhasana with your props. Just find that comfortable position for you. Balance your pelvis, remove the extra flesh from underneath and bring your hands together at the center of the heart. Relax your shoulders, relax your jaw, tuck it in slightly. Press the crown of the head up and reconnect with that cord that is pulling you up and think about pressing your body, your lower body to the floor and elongating from the navel up your spine. So there you are battling two forces, earth and sky. They say um, as humans, we walk the earth with our feet well planted, yet our, head, our heads are always facing upwards, always wondering and dreaming. And so we just, as yogis, try to find that balance between earth and sky. Relax the jaw, the face. We're going to seal our practice with the sound and vibration of OM. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale to OM. Relax your jaw, your face. Inhale to the top of your lungs, expand. Side out. Again, inhale. 
side out. Last one, inhale. Let all tension out. Tuck your chin onto your chest and blink your eyes open. Drop your hands and shower yourself with your own good vibes and shake off tensions and stresses that you don't need anymore. Thank you so much, yogis. Have a wonderful day. Namaste.